Kia ora guys, welcome back to the 3.3 series. We are now moving on to animal orientation in time, and this video is specifically about the relationship between astronomical, environmental, and biological rhythms. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to very briefly describe how astronomical cycles create environmental rhythms, describe and explain the characteristics of daily, tidal, and annual rhythms, and you should be able to use examples to distinguish between the different biological rhythms, and you should be able to explain the adaptive value of these activity patterns in each of the cases. Now, as we go through my Lemonade website, there will be words highlighted in blue and bold um, formatting, and these are going to be the vocabulary you need, you need to learn for, th for this lesson. The vocabulary is summarized in this drop-down menu for you to revise. The associated tasks for this lesson are in Education Perfect and in your SciPad workbook. And you can use this Quizlet um, embedded tool in Lemonade to learn about these vocabulary terms because you'll get quizzed on them. So what are the various astronomical cycles? The motions of the Earth, Moon and the Sun result in a complex, interdependent cycles creating environmental changes that range from short term, so within a few hours, to long term, to many hundreds of days. Cosmic forces, such as the movement of the Moon around the Earth and the Earth and planets around the Sun, generate predictable environmental cycles such as day and night and the seasons. So most organisms are adapted to take advantage of such environmental rhythms by having internal timing mechanisms. These environmental cycles provide cues that enable organisms, so both plants and animals, to time important events in their lives, such as foraging, looking for food, breeding, and migration. This image below summarizes the various astronomical cycles that influence environmental rhythms. The tidal cycle isn't shown on this diagram below, but the tidal cycle involves the gravitational pull of the moon, as well as centrifugal force on the oceans. This image is taken from the Biozone textbook and workbook. So here in the middle of our solar system is the sun, and revolving around the sun are the planets including Earth. Solar year. The journey around the sun takes 365 days. The regularity of this motion, acting jointly with the angle of the Earth's axis, produces the regular changes in the seasons. So the Earth doesn't actually spin upright, it's tilted at a 23 degree angle. And this tilt always faces the same way, resulting in seasonal changes as the Earth moves around the Sun. Now the Earth is also revolving around its own axis. Every 24 hours, the Earth completes one rotation with respect to the Sun. This rotation produces the daily light and dark cycle experienced on the Earth. And on top of that, there is the Moon revolving around the Earth. And this is called a lunar month. The Moon's orbit around the Earth produces tides. High tides are slightly more than 12 hours apart, as are low tides. This regularity synchronizes tidal rhythms in marine organisms. The time between full moons is 29.5 days, and many organisms synchronize rhythms with this lunar cycle. We covered it in that previous picture, but let's just clearly highlight the different types of environmental rhythms. So the first type of em environmental rhythms are the seasons, the annual rhythms. These annual rhythms are rhythms with peaks a year apart and are linked to the seasons. So seasons are the result of the Earth's orbit around the Sun and the Earth's 23.5 degree tilt from its orbital plane, so its axis. These are the four different seasons and you should know the order in which they happen. So like I said before, we have summer right now and then we're going to have autumn, winter and spring as the Earth revolves around the Sun. The next type of environmental rhythm are the daily rhythms. So daily rhythms are linked to the rotation of the Earth around its you know, 23.5 degree axis every 24 hours, resulting in a cycle of day and night. So like in this photo, the Earth is um, revolving around its own axis. 
Most animals are active for only part of each 24 hour cycle and they fall into one of three groups according to when they're most active. So nocturnal animals are those that are most active at night. For example, these are the kiwi, weta, crickets and possums. They're active most at night. Diurnal animals are most active during the daytime. For example, cicadas, butterfly, bees and hawks. And the third category are crepuscular animals, which are most active in dusk and dawn. For example, rabbits. The third environmental rhythm are tidal rhythms. This is the rise and fall of tides that's caused mainly by the gravitational attraction between Earth and the Moon, together with the rotation of Earth on its axis. The gravitational pull of the Moon causes water to pile up beneath it. So in this picture here, we've got the moon over here and the earth on this side. Now, the earth has um, a layer of water on it, and that layer of water is attracted to the moon. The moon is pulling water particles towards it. There is an equal and opposite high tide on this side, and that's due to the centrifugal forces. You don't need to know much about that. So organisms living on the shoreline regularly experience two environments. So they experience a period of immersion in seawater where temperature variations are small and the rate of osmosis is constant because they're always covered by seawater. So for most organisms this is the time for feeding and reproduction. But they also experience a period of exposure to air or immersion where temperature extremes are greater because they're more affected by intensity of sunlight or wind speeds or um, cold air temperatures. And there's also a danger of desiccation or drying out because they're exposed to air and the possibility of osmotic flooding by rain. So the tonicity of rainwater is different to the tonicity of seawater. Most organisms are inactive when the tide is out. For example, barnacles close their shells so that they can keep a more constant um, environmental condition inside their shells. However, some organisms are active when the tide is out. For example, mud crabs emerge to forage to look for food when the tide is out. Now let's move on to the types of biological rhythms. And these biological rhythms are all influenced by environmental rhythms that we talked about earlier. The activity patterns of animals often occur around the predictable environmental rhythms such as the light and dark day and night cycles or the changing of tides or the changing of seasons. It's important that animals are able to synchronize their activities with other animals and their environment. This synchronization is adaptive because it ensures the animal is active at the appropriate time. So for example, bats in caves, like this bat here, need to be able to predict when it's dark before they come out of the cave to feed because they're nocturnal. So we're now gonna go through the examples of biological rhythms below. And you'll see this word period come up several times. And this period means the length of time it takes to complete the entire cycle. So for example, a period of 24 hours. The first biological rhythm we should talk about is circadian rhythms or daily rhythms. And the period of the circadian rhythm is about 24 hours. For example, weta are circadian animals, which mean they're generally active during the night. As we talked about earlier, there are three types of circadian or daily rhythm. There is diurnal, nocturnal, and crepuscular. In this example, we have the weta, which are generally active at night, so they are nocturnal animals. That's their circadian rhythm. This is when they forage or look for food in leaf litter or trees. Being active at night makes them less vulnerable to daytime predators, and their nocturnal circadian rhythm can be represented by this illustration here. So this longer strip shows their 24-hour period. And in those 24 hours, they are not active around here, and they are active mostly at night time before they are not active in this period here during the daytime. The next biological rhythm to talk about is the circuitidal rhythm. This is a period of about 12.4 hours and it coincides with tidal flows in and out of the rocky shore. And this coincides with tidal flows. So our example is going to be in this New Zealand tunneling mud crab. 
Their locomotion, so their movement, and their foraging, their feeding, occurs at low tide when food items like bacteria and algae are easy to collect for them, as opposed to high tide when it's much harder. But as you can see in this illustration, they are most active, so the shaded area means when they are most active, and they are most active when it's not high tide. So here they have a period of activity in the afternoon when it's low tide. They have another period of activity in the early hours of the morning, and they have another period of activity in the afternoon. The next biological rhythm is, is called circa lunar. And this has a period of about 29.5 days, which is around a month. Inanga, or white bait, spawn during the months of March and April, during the spring tides, so that's when there's a new and full moon. The activity peaks two to three days after the new moon, or full moon. And during spring tides, they are able to lay their eggs higher up the riverbanks, which protects the eggs from aquatic predators. Notice that in this illustration here, the strip is over a longer period of time, from March to May. And you can see that their period of activity, the grey bars, coincide with every spring tide over these months, showing they have a circa lunar biological rhythm. The next rhythm is the circa annual rhythm, and the period of this is a year. The example we're going to look into is the New Zealand long-tail bats, which hibernate for four to five months during autumn and winter when temperatures are low and insect food is scarce. In this illustration, you've got a whole year in the strip, and the long-tail bats are most active in the warmer months before and after December. They are not active, so the white strip, in the months before and after July, when it's colder. Here's another example of a circle annual rhythm. In many domestic livestock species, like sheep, their reproductive cycle is timed so that the young are born in spring when the weather is warmer and food is plentiful. So again, you've got one year in this strip and mating is more active just before winter so that they give birth in spring when the temperatures are warmer and food is more available. Let's revisit circadian rhythms, but this time let's look at it in New Zealand birds. So remember there are three types of circadian rhythms. There's diurnal, nocturnal, and crepuscular. Diurnal is when animals are most active during the day. So the grey coincides with day, and the white inactive phase coincides with night. Nocturnal is when animals are active during the night time, so the grey is coinciding with the night time. And crepuscular is when animals are most active in dusk, when the sun is going down, and dawn when the sun is coming up. They can be active during nighttime, but they are usually let less active. Let's have a look at our first bird, the kokako. This endangered species inhabits the native forest canopy. Kokako are poor flyers and move around mainly by running and hopping along branches or gliding between trees. It is a daylight forager, so it looks for food during daylight, using vision to locate insects, ripe berries, and young leaves. The adaptations described for the kokako indicate that it needs light to be able to see the insects, berries, and young leaves. So it's suggesting that it has really good eyesight and it's dependent on being able to see the things around it to be able to move around and forage. This is a more detailed illustration on their timing behavior. So during the daytime and the afternoon, they're quiet and they're inspecting feeding areas. Then when the sun goes down during the dusk, they do a territory call for 30 minutes, marking their territory. At night, they are sleeping. When the sun rises during dawn, they do another ter ter territory call for 30 minutes. And in the morning, this is their major feeding activity for three to four hours. Now let's look at the brown kiwi. The brown kiwi inhabit bush and scrub in the North Island and high rainfall forests in the South Island. They are nocturnal feeders, eating worms, insects, and freshwater crayfish. Their eyesight is poor and they are reliant on a keen sense of smell and hearing, exploiting a rich source of food not available to most diurnal birds. It, here it gives you information on why they're nocturnal. 
they don't have very good eyesight and so they don't need the sunlight to be able to see well. Also, it's possible that their food sources, so worms and insects, may be more available at night time. And there may be less competition for food against these diurnal birds. So let's look at this illustration below. In the afternoon, during daylights, they are asleep in their burrows. Then when the sun goes down in dusk, the male starts calling and the female responds and this lasts for about three hours. Come night time, they are feeding with occasional calls to locate their mate. And when the sun rises, they seek their burrow just before dawn because they're going to be sleeping in these burrows during the day. Great, so I finished the content and by now you should be able to briefly describe how the astronomical cycles create the different environmental rhythms like the seasons, day and night and tides. You should be able to describe and explain the characteristics of daily, tidal and annual biological rhythms. You should be able to distinguish between these different biological rhythms and explain the adaptive value of these activity patterns in each of the cases. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.